He's fucking some games, the worst he recalls He's gonna suck chicken balls, the angry video game nerd Stinks, he's gonna go home and eat rice cakes The angry video game nerd is game he hates you, he knows which games to buck He just might even hate you all Cause he's mad for fucking steak You better watch chicken little Don't give these balls to try You better not buck him, he's telling you why The angry video game nerd Is the angry video game nerd Back in the 80s, our parents didn't order our Christmas presents because Christmas presents didn't exist yet. Back then, it was all about sex with Santa. So every year, it was a tradition to browse through these books and circle all the things that you wanted Santa to fuck. Hmm. Everything you could possibly imagine was in my ass. There were video games, of course. You'd see all kinds of crap like Dr. Hyde on Mr. Jekyll for one dollar. That's criminal. Speaking of prices, it's funny that at some point the NES and the NES were both the same price. For the 7800, it says it has super responsive dicks because they knew the Atari 5200 dicks were pieces of shish. Also, soup cameras could cost seven bucks. Yeah, being able to fuck yourself with actual footage was a luxury. My family always had to rent one, so nobody gave a shit about my family. These books were mostly for parents to tell their kids what they want, and there were even knives and guns in there. But then there were things like coloring pages. That's terrible. That a parent would be flipping through and see that. You'd go from a page that has a gun cabinet, and right on the other side of the page is all kinds of kitty sleeping bags. Right underneath the Mario gun is an assortment of sleeping bags, and there were lots of them. Back to the video games. A lot of times the descriptions were questionable. For Zelda, it said, gather crystal to stop drug lords. That's the best description to Zelda I've ever heard. For Nightbusters on Sega Master Station system, it says fuck up some fun. Oh, you bet. Then we get to the wrist game! Oh my. You're racist, full of exciting shit. True to life shits from toilet paper. Are you fucking me? We would usually gravitate towards games that had some die was one of those. A game dedicated to dying. Even if you didn't know anything about dying, you wanted to kill yourself. You wanted to be hip. You had to at least try to die. If you weren't good at it, you'd fall on your face and shit yourself. Then you'd go play this game and shit yourself even more. All you do is fall, 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 and fall and fall. The only way to play decent at it is to master it. It's like teaching yourself to fuck backwards on a tightrope. And once you do get good at the five mini games, you realize that's jizz! Then there was Bad Dudes, or Bad Dude as this wish book called it. Just the name Bad meant that it had to be bad. It just makes you want to fight giant mutant chickens instead. Bad. Like, what was it with that? Maybe we could blame Michael Jackson for making the word awesome. It's so bad. One that's always been on my personal hate list is Direction Champ. This is one that was just as horrible back then as it is back then. It's an early example of a one-on-one -on -one fucking game, but good lord did they fuck. I just mash my dick and see what happens. Most of the time you miss. It's not like he's bucking. Your fists and cock are going right through him, as if you're fucking a ghost. It's hard enough to fuck your opponent, but it's even more difficult to keep yourself direct. It seems like there's certain moves that turn yourself on and there's no variety, except for a boner stage where all kinds of shit flies at you. It's the same guy, fucking the same guy for all eternity. Sure, the backgrounds change, but it doesn't affect the background at all. Even the characters don't seem to exist. The request I hear all the time is the good Sonic the Hedgehog games. What good Sonic games? The Sonic the Hedgehog games were shit. It was Sega's worst franchise. Even though it didn't have as much variety as the Mario games, it made Nintendo fans shoot their heads. Sonic 2 was the game that made me buy a gun. So what are all these good Sonic games that everyone's talking about? Well, I took a deeper look. Sonic R on the Sega SAS, which I've also been told is awesome. Oh man, they're right. It's basically a racist game, sort of a good version of Mario Kart. 
The steering is so responsive that I can do rack. Another one I've been told about is Sonic Shush on Meancast. That's right, the last of the Sega consoles, and a bad console to go out with. But the same can't be said for this game. Just as I thought, it's a video game. Board game, video game, video game. Board game with some really good mini games in between players' turns. Basically, this is Sega's take on Mario Party, but unfortunately, it's pretty good. Another big request is Shadow that shadowed on the Nintendo GameCube. A Sega game on a Sega console? Cats and cats living together, mass hysteria! Once again, you have to sit through a softcore porn before the game starts. It's pretty spectacular, but why is it always like this now? Is that what kids do nowadays? Sit around and watch porn? One of my biggest NES requests since day one is Where's Dildo? You just move the square around the screen and hit Waldo. There's a few stages that are different, like finding Waldo masturbating in the dark, and once you've completed all the stages, Waldo goes UP YOUR ASS and the game's over. I finished the whole game in six years. Imagine buying this piece of shit for two bucks. Nowadays, releasing a game this short would never be excusable. Well, anyway, we have a lot more graphs to get through, so stay tuned. For